Let's go to Russia, where over the weekend its currency, the ruble, fell heavily against the US dollar and other currencies amid news of Yevgeny Prigozhin's mutiny, then a band of march on Moscow. Whichever way this plays out, it brings more risk to markets, especially for oil prices and for food in the future. Oil prices notably remain weaker, below $70 US a barrel. It's down 13% over the past six months. Join me now, George Baburis, Managing Director of K2 Asset Management. George, always good to speak to you about these things. I mean, that's the issue, isn't it? It's all about the perceived risk of what happens if something does flare in Russia. Yeah, spot on. That's true, Ross. Unfortunately, uh, markets are trying to price in future earnings, credit conditions, economic conditions. Central banks are getting on top of what they're really fighting hard with inflation. But this geopolitical event on the weekend, it just amplifies the risk. It, it's, it's not conducive to uh, markets uh, functioning going forward and the volatility events there. At the end of the day, we're taught with Game Theory 101. When it comes to Russia through history, uh, don't play a game of chess with them too, uh, too, too openly and never corner them. And, uh, and so those events on the weekend do amplify tensions, impacts markets, commodities, etc and just makes the inflation issue to address for Western economies so much harder. Yeah, that's true. And you talk about what central banks are doing now because they're grappling with inflation. And even though ultimately inflation might be homegrown, it really did start as a result of Russia's invasion to Ukraine. So you go to food prices, wheat prices in particular, you go to oil prices, even though they've come back down, they got to around $120 US a barrel um, last year. And that really did start to, if you like, escalate the inflation that now central banks and governments are trying to grapple with. Exactly. So everything's data dependent. So we're following the central banks and overgeneralising the Fed's towards the end of its rate hike cycle with a hawkish tone. ECB is very aggressive. The RBA is trying to catch up. Uh, the, the Chinese are cutting rates for different reasons. But, but as they're trying to get on top of the inflation issue, uh, again, the geopolitical events, it's just not very good for inflation going forward and for confidence. And as you say, oil prices higher. Uh, and again, for the headline inflation story, that's not very good. It would impact margins, again, for corporates around the world that have been quite resilient to date. Uh, but even though there's resilience in the labour market and economies and, again, earnings around the Western world, uh, tensions like uh, geopolitical events like the weekend are very hard to invest through. And, uh, again, it's going to challenge people's uh, resolve and very, it makes it very, very difficult, again, just to reinforce it for central banks to, who are just getting on top of inflation this doesn't help the story. And, of course, investors broadly, and, I mean, you're one of those, you know, you've seen a very strong run in the equities markets here and in the United States in particular. The recovery of the IT sector in the US on the tech shares has been, you know, quite astonishing over the past three months or so. But, you know, this is the whole question about should I invest, should I not invest, what's my timing like, not quite knowing what the future might be geopolitically. Yeah, I mean, that's the uncertainty. But remember, we're always investing one year forward. You're buying earnings one year forward, credit conditions. But very quickly, with the US uh, technology, it, it's been a narrow rally that, that has granted. But corporate America and corporates in the Western world, it, it needs to be noted, they've had some resilience to their earnings. The downgrades have been there, but nowhere near where we thought over a year ago or 18 months ago. There is a resilience, and corporates have been able to pass on price rises to date. Now, going forward, that won't hold up because rates are staying higher for longer and creating additional demand destruction and challenges. But labour markets are tight and corporates are well-placed and the earnings downgrades, again, are nowhere near as bad as we thought. Hence, markets need to rally in anticipation of the recovery in 2024 because we believe it's a soft landing or, in the US, a shallow recession. But having said that, uh, that, that's good enough for that rebound in earnings coming out of 24 and into 25. But it is a narrow rally to date, and that's why a lot of people are questioning it, and they've missed out a, a, a lot of it because it's up over 22% from those lows we saw in uh, October last year. And one other aspect of this is that oil prices, having come down from $120 to $70 US a barrel, is deflationary. So it really is a bit of a catch-up in some ways um, as to whether there is going to be pressure on inflation going forward. That's why this Russian situation right now is just so important. Exactly. It, it just overcomplicates the matter. And again, going back to game theory, very difficult. And that is why going forward, it's going to change the behaviours of investors and change their, 
their outlook for economic conditions, even though the Russian economy is not that big per se, but it's what's going on with these, uh, with these inflation and supply side shocks. Again, core, core inflation, just to reinforce this point, because the energy is to do with headline, but there is a services component to the core measure around the world that's uh, stubbornly high and does need to be addressed. And that's only going to come, unfortunately, with demand destruction or a, a worsening of the labour market conditions, which are very, very strong at the moment. Uh, George Babura, it's always good to chat to you. Many thanks for your time from K2 Asset Management. Have a great day. Thank you.